Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Good news, we got some snow. We finally used that snowblower. Bad news, I never went through and cleaned the carb for a second time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I had a hard time starting the snowblower. Uh, figured it out to be bad gas. Went through, cleaned the carb, did a quick clean like I do for my chainsaws. Not getting into the jets and all that, just a real quick carb clean. Um, fired right up, but it doesn't have uh, the power. Like um, I'm, I'm lacking the power for the snow to be able to actually throw it well, and it wants to stall and cut out. So I had a comment on that video about pulling it apart again, and this time going through the jets, cleaning them, and uh, putting it back together and seeing how it does. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna pull the carb off that snowblower, give it a good, good deep clean, put it back together, and uh, see how it runs. Now it was spitting and sputtering. Um, couldn't use the choke, couldn't turn it to run in full speed without it choking out. That's pretty much what we were dealing with. If you wanna see that first carb clean video, I'll have it popping up right here. You guys can check that out. It'll be on top of the screen. If not, stick around. We're gonna clean that carb again right now. Hey guys, we got some snow. Show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, I fired up the snowblower, brought it out of the carport, made a few passes, and it, it barely wanted to throw this. This isn't super packy stuff. It's starting to get packy because it's warming up, but it was really light this morning and it just it didn't want to throw it. So it's that carburetor. That's, that's the issue. We're going to come into the shop, though. I already got it in here. Got some tools set up. And we're going to start working on it. Now, this is the Aaron's Deluxe 24. It's a great machine. I think the whole thing here at fault is just uh, stabilizing the gas at the end of the season instead of just draining it dry. If you have this machine at the end of winter, just drain it dry and you don't even have to worry about that gas giving you any issues because there's nothing left in it. So drain the tank dry, see if it'll fire up and run any gas that's left in the carburetor out or your lines and you should be good. Now that is a bunch of the comments I've gotten on videos as we've been going over this machine for a couple of years now, and that's what a lot of people recommend you do, and that's what I will be doing from here on out. But today, we gotta pull all this stuff apart, like the last video, we'll go through step by step, and then we'll clean that carburetor. All right guys, so first thing I wanna do is show you the bolts, so you can see them up close. That way there, I can go through and just take them off. So right here next to your, your run and start, there's one here, pull this off. Come around just behind the chute, there's two. Right here, pull those off. After those are off, the shroud will come off. And then there's one down here, pull that off. That's what I'm getting ready to do right now, just in case I click this thing to high speed. All right, next bolt, here's that switch, you're on and off switch. There's one, two bolts right by the primer bulb. We're gonna pull those. There's two bolts over here, right? Here's your rip cord, you're on switch. One, two, we're gonna pull those. So four bolts, that's what we're pulling next. Still 10 millimeter socket. All right, we got our bolts pulled so far. We need to get our knobs off, okay? Remember what way they're kind of facing before you pull them? Okay, what's facing where? These are just a tug up and they're off. All these bolts need to be set aside in a special place so you don't lose nothing, all right? Come over here, your fuel line. Turn your fuel line off, because it doesn't need to be on. Then go ahead and pull the fuel line knob off. Once those are off, this piece right here Right where your primer bulb is, this piece, you should be able to work this off fairly easy. And we have all these wire connectors down here. All right, so we got all our wire connectors down here. Pay attention where things go. The longer wire goes to the top on and off switch. The shorter connectors are down where the key, the plastic key switch is, all right? We also got this little hose 
for your primer bulb. Now I'm gonna pull that off. We may get some gas squirting out of that. Just squeezing that thing a little. Could probably do it by hand, but we got the pliers. So, all right, that's out of the way. Now, these little tabs, there's a little locking thing in there. You'll have to get a small flathead screwdriver and kind of just, well, I already bent mine from last time. So you may have a little bit of an issue. You'll have to just get in here, take your time, and work these wires off. They should just pop off, but if they are locked on, you'll have to take your screwdriver in there and just kind of toy around with it, all right? Don't go breaking nothing. Take it easy. See, this one's locked in place. Doesn't want to let go, so I got to go grab a screwdriver and kind of fiddle around with that tab. That pops on. The female end pops on onto it. It curls over, and in the center here, there's a little, little tab. You want to push that tab in and pull it off. And stab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver. That always helps. If you don't do that, if you don't stab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver, it might not work. So make sure you, you just stab yourself in the hand a little. Spacer nuts by the carb. I'm pulling those two nuts off next. All right, so this whole piece here is pretty well freed up for the most part. The rip cord's gonna have to be pulled out of the way. And there's an eight millimeter that's holding this shroud on over here. Let me show you. All right, so the rip cord's gotta be moved. I take this whole plastic piece and bend it. If you want, go over there, take all your parts off, do all that. I'm not doing that. I'm not wasting my time. Get in here right next to your rip cord. All right, there's a nut right there. That's an eight millimeter, does not fit the 10. I don't have an eight. I'm not searching for an eight. I don't feel like it. So we're gonna grab a pair of pliers, twist it out. Once that eight millimeters out, this plastic piece is free. All right, see? You gotta work it off the two studs in front of your carburetor. Start working it up. And then remember, there's a little plastic clip over here holding the spark plug wire. So try to work it up and around and over there you can get to the back side of that. Kind of force that thing out. Okay, take your plastic piece, set it aside. All right, spark plug player, blah, 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 whatever. It's out of the way. You guys get it. Gas line, still going to have gas in it. But before I go pulling that, let's drain the carb. So let's move this wire out of the way. It's a good idea to have a can or something to catch the gas in. All right, guys, you want some sort of catch. Don't let this just go on the ground and on the floor of your shop and garage or whatever. Have something underneath your carburetor. This is what I'm going to show you. Carburetor. Right here. Carburetor. There's two, two bolts under here. All right. You got one closest to the tire and one in the center. The one closest to the tire is the one you want to drain first. It's the lowest point of the carb. That's what we're draining. This one. Use your socket. Go ahead because that's an 8 millimeter like, or a 10 millimeter like everything else. Okay. Usually a quick pop and it's loose. I hold the can under there that I usually catch in. This is an empty can. All right, that's draining. Don't lose this. There's a little washer on the end of this, all right? Don't lose this. Don't lose your washer. If you use a rag to dry your hands or anything like that, make sure that rag doesn't stay in your shop as they can spontaneously combust and burn your place down. All right, guys? My hands are covered in gas, but they're going to be anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Careful, grab some pliers. There's a little clamp right here on the big hose. See the big hose? Comes from your tank down to a carburetor. Watch your eyes. This hose loves to spit in your face. It says, hey, you're a jerk, have gas in your face, all right? It just, it does, it says that. Hold the hose in the can, stretch it down a little bit, give her give her a shake. You guys know what I'm talking about, all right? Give a little, ta -ta -ta -ta. all right, good to go. Put my little plug 
we removed back into the carburetor. Only finger tight here. All right, just so I can keep it with the carb and I don't accidentally lose it or lose my washer. Long needle nose, itty bitty pliers. Little guys, right? See, not very big. We gotta mess around with this stuff. I hate messing around with this stuff. The spring always gets a bend in it and it's like, ugh, so stupid. Anyway, you gotta get this little spring unhooked. So very carefully, pull it to you and up. That's it. Nice and easy. You shouldn't have to fight with it. Just be easy, don't go breaking it. Slide the carburetor forward a little because now we have to undo this rod. As you can see, the rod gets caught. But you slide it forward, back and up, just a little, and that pops right out. Okay, carburetor is free. We're going to the workbench. We're gonna tear this thing down. We are over at the workbench. I got a little catch pan. I got some of this. Everybody says, don't use this, I hate this. Yeah, don't use it if you don't want. I don't, it's up to you. I don't care. Couple screwdrivers. Phillips, a little baby flat. Another flat. Let's need those pliers. Gonna try to keep you guys right in view in front of me so you can see exactly what I'm about to do. All right, be prepared to get dirty and stinky. It's not always a bad idea to put down a piece of cardboard on your workbench, a piece of cardboard that you can air dry later or burn or something. You don't wanna toss it out because it could catch fire, but it's just to catch any extra splash. I'm not putting one down today, I don't feel like it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't. All right, so first thing we gotta do is go back over there and get our 10 millimeter wrench because we need to undo this center bolt. Ta-da! All right, listen, if you guys want a slower version of getting this thing off this far, my other video that I had popping up earlier walks it through a lot slower. I'm going quick here because this is my second time cleaning this carb this month and I just want to kick it. Should have done it this way the first time. Anyway, we're undoing this, keeping everything over our little catch pan. All right, undo the bolt. It's got a washer. Don't lose it. Set it aside. Let's look. Is this thing dirty? No, it's pretty clean. It's been cleaned last time. We got a seal in here. If the seal decides to come out, take it out, set it aside. All right. Now, something that's it's, it's not a bad idea to have is a little um, brass brush or a toothbrush. Toothbrush is the best. Because at this point, if your carb is dirty, you guys want to spray carb cleaner in here, take your toothbrush, your wife's toothbrush, whatever, and clean this out really, really well. Okay, try not to spray carb cleaner on this float. We just, we don't want to do that. It can dry it out too much, it can damage it. All those other really, really good things that we don't want to happen because they're not actually really, really good. Next, we do need to undo the float, okay? This pin, this pin that goes side to side here holds the whole float mechanism together. There's another needle in there with a spring. You undo it, the spring can take off. You need to be careful and be paying attention to what you're doing. Hold the float down, pull that pin out, okay? Keep it in a safe spot. What I like to do is cover the whole thing with my hand as I turn it upside down. And like, be super careful because you lose parts and you're in trouble at this point. All right, guys. Now, something neat about this particular one is the spring stays with the needle, okay? But if it doesn't, or you're working on a different model, you might lose it. Pop it off. I'm holding that spring. That's the spring. You lose that spring, the whole thing isn't gonna work. It was in there. I popped it out. We're setting that aside. Making sure there's no tension on this spring before I set it down. Everything's loose, okay? So it looks like these springs are kind of pressed on. Like we shouldn't lose it, but I'm not going to play with it a whole lot. Set that aside. Good clean surface is the way to go. I'm a woodworker. I got sawdust and junk in here, so I need to really like set these on something clean like a rag. Yeah, do that. Set yours on a rag. I'm being told... All right, this is this is where I cleaned it, just like this last time, as it is. This is what I do with the chainsaw, similar thing, and I'm done. What I'm being told is we need to pull this needle out that's in here. I think it's called a needle. And you're going to need a really small flathead screwdriver, whether it's like this or like that. You can see where the flathead goes in there when yours is in hand. 
We need to remember how many turns. All right, I'm gonna use the bigger screwdriver, Never mind. We gotta remember how many turns this is gonna take though to get it out. Cause we have to put the exact same amount of turns when we put it back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's free. It's free. I think I've been calling that part a pin or needle, I mean. I think it's a jet, actually, is what it's called. Listen, guys. Just a garage mechanic. I'm not some professional. Just a dude cleaning my own stuff. There are some channels that have all this down better than me. Won't be offended if you check them out. All right, so that piece does come out of there. I wasn't sure. All right. This... See all these holes? You guys might not be able to. So there's holes on here. I've got a little thumbtack. There's holes right here, though. All right, we're going to clean those holes. We're going to clean the crud off of right here. Spray this thing down with carb cleaner, and then we'll put this thing back together. We're not widening these holes. We're just kind of using the tip and just clearing them out. Tips and tricks to doing this. Those comments are always welcome down below, guys. For some of you that uh, do this a lot on carburetors and machines, this is your job. Those are always welcome. I'm always open to uh, helpful tips, ideas, and other things from other channels and, you know, mechanics as far as this stuff goes because you guys and gals do these things way more than I do. And I'm sure there's a better, easier way. And if there is, feel free to share. It's always welcome. I'm gonna take this piece and just make sure it's cleared out in here. Yeah, my thumbtack's all bent. Get a straight one. Probably make your life way easier. Okay, that all looks pretty good. I gotta grab a brush though, I wanna scrub that baby down. Okay, guys, so in this case, I just have this soft, this plastic bristle brush. When I say scrub down, I mean, we're not, like, trying to gouge this thing up. That's why we're not using a metal brush, all right? That's why I say a toothbrush. This piece in my hand is just brass. You don't want to go jacking this thing up. Brass, a little brass brush. Little black dots, those are holes. Make sure they all look clear. I'm actually gonna take the carb cleaner, shoot it right through that. Or attempt to at least. You should wear rubber gloves though, this stuff is toxic. Got a little lip right here, okay? That goes down in first. But before I drop that back in there, I'm going to take my cleaner. And I'm just spraying everything out. Okay. Oh, let's move that seal because we shouldn't get carb cleaner on that seal. It's not good. Move this little piece out of the way as well. Holding this in hand. The little rib, the single rib by itself down here, a little beveled on the inside. We're dropping that down in. Then we're going to take the one that kind of looks like a nut, flat head, side facing up, drop that down in. Now with this in hand, I remember Stanley on my screwdriver had to face my hand. Okay, maybe we did seven, because at seven it stopped. Looking at our float. We're gonna have to put this baby back on. Be careful we don't jack our spring up. Try to push it, the spring down and slide the piece on so the spring is below that little, there's a little shelf. Okay. 
We're going to slip this over. Put that needle down in where it goes. Kind of keep your finger there to keep the needle in place. Grab that pin. Make sure everything's clean, all right, guys? And attempt to line it all up. Now, I'm not kidding. You can lose springs and parts very, very easy. If you do, you're, you're out of commission. You're out of luck. You're going to have to order new parts. Probably just get a new carb would be the cheapest route. So don't. Don't lose stuff, all right? Let's take our seal. Make sure your seal's clean. Wipe it down if need be with a rag or whatever. Seat that back in place where it belongs. If you can, try to line it back up by hand. So this has two ears on it, okay? Two ears. Now I remember the hose being near the tire and I want that drain plug near the tire. So that's how we got to put this back on. Hose, drain plug, okay? Put this bolt back on, which is going to put everything back together. Now, I don't crank on these. Tight is tight. Finger tight. Grab your ratchet. Go until it feels snug. A couple clicks. I just, I want it to stop, you know, but not kill it. That's good. So it's compressed everything in there, and it's not good. Here's why. Look. So I let that twist in that ear popped up out of the groove. So now it's not seated in properly. The carburetor is going to leak. Line this back up so it's in the groove. The ear is in the groove. Hold it in place with your index finger and your thumb maybe. Okay. Tight is tight. That is done. Let's put this back on the machine and see what we're working with. All right, guys, back over here by the machine, taking a look. Here's our carburetor in hand, okay? That black piece needs to face back. And the gray piece is kind of facing you as you're working. Let's put these things, line everything up to the holes on the carburetor. Let's slide it back, okay? Next thing we're going to need is those needle nose pliers. We're basically doing the job we just did in reverse. So slide it back forward. Take the bigger rod. It's got to go into that black piece, right? Pops down and you're done. Grab your little tiny spring wire. Remember, there's a hole by that rod. So now we got to try to bring it over. Pop it in the hole. Try not to deform this a whole lot because it's it is it is fragile and very easy to deform and we don't want to do that so let's slide that back in place let's put our gas line back on the carburetor next is that plastic piece that went over the carb this slips over the carb um studs all right so kind of gonna pop this on pop it over your gas line and you got to just fiddle around to what works for you. Get the studs through those holes. Push everything back, okay? Now this is also where that 8 millimeter goes back in. Up here by the ripcord. All right, mine's all set. Once yours is all set, the next thing you want to do is get those spacers that you pulled off of the carburetor. Your spacer nuts. Put those on down here. Where you pulled them off by the carb on the carburetor studs. Now these hold the carburetor on, all right? So we I like to finger tight, grab my ratchet. Tight is tight. We're not ripping down on these things, we're just making them snug. If you guys have done this job, you do this job and it works out well for you, comment below and let me know this worked for you and you had good results. Also, if you're this far into the video, guys, for real, Give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It helps my channel grow. It shows that these videos are important. You guys enjoy them and that they are helpful. And I seriously, seriously appreciate it. If this has helped you a lot and you want to be able to help me, you can always become a member. Check that out on my main page or down below. Follow the members link or the, yeah, I think it's a members link or join button click those you guys can see what it's all about to be a member as i have monthly members helping support this channel directly and i greatly greatly appreciate it as this has now become one of my full-time jobs youtube and my business and so all the help you guys give me i really do appreciate it and you know what that's why i don't mind giving the help back anyway let's keep going guys 
next piece right here with our little doohickey and the switch and the thingamabob. Let's grab that white wire that we took off. We remember where everything goes, do we not? I hope so. Plug our wires back on. This is where we're paying attention in pictures, guys. All right, so you know which way these go. The short wire goes to the bottom key, two short wires, and the two long wires go at the uh, upper part there. Let's see here. All right, whoop, whoop, getting a little crazy there. We don't wanna bend nothing. I'm gonna bring these up here. Now there's four plugs here. I did the one that was facing away from the shroud. That's what they were on when I pulled them off. That's what they're gonna be on when I plug them back in. Okay, so there's that. All right guys, so after you've put the carb, or the, uh, sorry guys, after you put the spark plug wire um, back in place right here on the plastic, right? So we pop that thing out, we need to squeeze it back in there. We gotta remember to hook the hose up to our primer bulb, this little hose. Come down to where the back of the primer bulb was, push that on. You can actually squeeze this little piece yourself. If that's not on, you're not gonna be able to prime it, so. I always forget, I get everything put back together and I forget to put that on, but there it is, that's on. Now let's go ahead, put this metal shroud on. We've already bent that piece back over and we've put our fuel line knob on, right? Because this piece was bent out, we bent it in. This piece pulls up to the edge of the gas tank. Take two nuts, line up your holes with those the threads on that other metal piece that's right there. Let's do real quick, finger tight. So there's four of them here, right? So we got one and two over there, and then there's two down here right above your primer bulb. Those are the ones that are uh, attached by the carburetor. Put our, our knobs back on here. Make sure everything works. Okay, they all work. Let's go into moving. Moving on to putting the cover over the exhaust here. Now there's a piece over here that moves. Right now we're looking at that flat cover, not the holy one. And we gotta kinda pop it over the exhaust and just pop it over the lip that's down here. Then we have this piece. See, I just did it wrong. See that? This piece needs to be on the inside. So hold it up in place, then fiddle around. Okay. So now we're back together. So now we need to take a nut, put it in here, pop this down, okay? Now put the one in over on this side. Again, I'm not showing every little shot. If you're doing this job, you're gonna know what I'm talking about when you're looking at it, okay? Two over here. So now you're trying to line these up to go through everything and, and tighten it down. It doesn't always doesn't always go super smooth but put those two in and tighten them up all right so we got the two in here you got to line everything up all right to get these two in that's it now turn the gas back on all right make sure it's facing on whichever way yours is should be this if it's the same machine i'm gonna turn this to start turn this to the old rabby rabby move this just a touch it's supposed to primer three times All I'm gonna do in here is make sure it fires up. It's gonna fire up, run for like two seconds and I'm shutting it off because we're in the garage. Then we're gonna move it outside. I'll start it up, we'll move some snow and see what happens. All right. It also helps when it's on because mine was off just now. That's probably my issue.
All right, fired up. We're going outside, guys, because I'm not going to have all that exhaust in here. All right, guys, we're outside here. We're going to fire this thing up in just a second. I'm going to hand the, the camera to my video guy who's going to help me out out here. All right, bring it over here, bud, so we can look at everything. So make sure your key's in, your switch is on. We already primed it in the shop. I turn this to fast, turn this to run. Two hands, buddy. Step back. There we go, right there. All right, gas is still on. Now we're going to let this just sit for a minute, kind of warm up. Right now we're on start. Let's see if it keeps running. Right, guys so as you can see it runs it's not spitting and sputtering as bad as it was jakes thanks for holding the camera buddy good job um yeah i don't know what the deal is maybe i got to get this tank cleaned out a little bit better so there's no gunk in it i mean it's running pretty good but it sounds like i'm kind of losing power but at the same time this snow wasn't as heavy this morning and it's gotten pretty packy here Later in the afternoon, it's warmed up quite a bit. So now I'm dealing with some fairly heavy, packy snow, and it could just be bogging down from that. I mean, I'm taking a full cut instead of a half a cut to move it, and it really is, you know, it's bogging it down a little bit. So other than that, though, it sounds to me like it's running smooth. You guys let me know on your end if it sounds pretty smooth. I know a lot of you guys that work on these things give me a bunch of good feedback, and I do appreciate that. So if you guys enjoyed the video, if it helped you out, if you have some good comments or some good feedback to help myself or others with working on the carburetor on this Aaron's Deluxe 24, leave a comment below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe guys, check out some videos popping up, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.